The Secrets of Stargate is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, episode 29. Janet West Jackson has identified the seventh symbol. All right, here we go. We are about to try to make a connection. All we gotta do is bust out of here, commandeer the ship, and fly on home. Indeed. You say that a lot. I know that this could be dangerous. But this is our job, right? It's what we signed on to do. It was never about going home. It's about getting us to where we're going. Howdy and welcome to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies, TV, t- and TV series, including SG-1, Atlantis Universe, and more. I'm Father Corey Steak. I'm taking over for Jack Berzini this week. Fortunately, Lisa Jones and Victor Lambs are here. Howdy, Lisa. Hey, Father Corey. Howdy, Victor. Hi, Father Corey. Well, before we start talking about uh, this week's episode, which is Family, the eighth episode of the second season, Victor's got an announcement. That's right. So, uh, as you know, we've all been waiting for new Stargate content to hit our our screens. Uh, Our eight-year-old, who I've mentioned on the podcast before, and I could not wait any longer. So we've taken it upon ourselves to create a new Stargate adventure in a Mm. most unconventional format. And so... uh, it's in development right now, but we're hoping that by this Christmas, you'll all be able to play an original Stargate-inspired adventure on your original Game Boy systems. Oh, sweet. Um, and if you don't have an original Game Boy system, you'll be able to play it in your web browser, on your computer or mobile device. Um, imagine uh, or think about uh, Pokemon meets Zelda meets Undertale meets Stargate, and that's kind of uh, what it will be um, a nice uh, casual game and, and Christmas present to all of our fans. Oh, fun. Yeah, I got Victor gave me a peek at it early and it, it looks looks pretty impressive what he's got. He's making his own music even. It's it's all, you know, self-composed music. He's not not borrowing anything from anyone else. Sounds like a great gift I can check off people on my list, right? Yeah. 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 The best gifts are the ones you, you make uh, yourself. Um, so it'll cover most of the first season and then... Uh, if uh, if people like it, uh, we'll we'll continue on with season two. Cool, very cool. Yeah, we'll have to look out for that. Like I said, it was it, it looks very interesting, very much you know kind of the Game Boy, Nintendo, NES era uh, role playing type games. So we'll make sure that it's announced when it's available, and you can download it and have fun. Absolutely, thanks. Yeah, not a problem. So well, let's with that. Let's get on to uh, this episode. Uh, as I said, it was it's the eighth episode of the second season of Stargate SG One, and called Family. And of course, me, my thought was, you know, we should be playing Sister Sledge. We are family right now. We are family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had to yeah. get had to get the earworm in there, you yeah. know. Um, but as as a some I got all my Jaffa in me. <laughs> Better version of the song. No. Um, yeah. So as a summary, uh, Braytac stops by SGC to give Tilk some bad news. Apophis has kidnapped his son, Ryak. After overcoming the surprise that Apophis is still alive, spoiler, that's not the last time that'll happen to SG-1, <laughs> SG-1 goes to Chulak to rescue him. More bad news. Tilk's wife, Brayak, has divorced him and hitched up with Tilk's best friend, Frotak, who is totally trustworthy until he isn't. The first rescue at Attempt fails because Ryak is brainwashed, but the totally not a trap second attempt succeeds in bringing Ryak and Dreak to Earth. After some Zatroshock therapy, Ryak is back to normal, so he and his mom are sent to the Land of Light, where they no longer have to worry about the Broca Divide. So, Lisa, what do you think of this episode? Oh, gosh, not me first. I, I, wish, I, <laughs> I wish I could say I really like this episode. I, it's just not my favorite. I don't know. Okay. It's a uh, little, I don't know, a little, little too much cheese, a little too much predictability. Mm-hmm. It's all happy in the end. So I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Victor? <laughs> like sands through the hourglass. These yeah. are the days of our Jaffa. <laughs> no, it's uh, no a little, I mean, you know, they have to build out Teal'c's backstory. Uh, we, we get a little bit more of a glimpse into the life of, uh, you know, the family life of the Jaffa. Um, there are some cool moments in it, uh, which we can talk about. Certainly, uh, 
Jack in the uh, Serpent Guard outfit uh, mm -hmm. is, is a standout image. Um, and then I have a rather controversial take on, on this that we'll get into later. Mm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, Catherine Powers penned episode, uh, a lot about, you know, interpersonal, uh, relationships and stuff, but definitely builds up the, the mythos of the, uh, of the Jaffa a little bit, I think, or, you know, fills in some of the, the backstories on that. Mm, very good. Well, you know, and, and of course, there, there are some returning characters in here. Uh, start with Braytac. You know, he he dials up the the SGC. Hey, yo, I need to stop by and visit. Um, little, little funny though that they didn't give him a code with his own for himself. Instead, just gave him another SGC or uh, SG one GDO. But and, and did they tell him and they did that? I kinda, hmm? did, did him and know that they did that? I would assume, I thought so, you know, but yeah, because, uh, you know, obviously SG-1 is standing there yeah. in the control room as the SG-1 code comes across. Yeah. So I think he must have known. Yeah, I think that's just so we can get, like, a few seconds of, like, is this more SG-1 robots or something, you know, <laughs> Yeah. What what's going on here? Because Braytac has been to the SGC before, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, they, yeah. That's because that's where he met Hammond of Texas. <laughs> Jack of the Windy City, we get introduced to. Uh, today. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So we, we start with Braytac, and then we then we of course got Dryak, uh, Tilk's wife, who basically divorces him and hooks up with the other guy, uh, who we and, meet for the first time. And she's had some work done. Uh, previously, she was played by Sally Richardson uh, from Eureka and a number of other shows, and now uh, the character's picked up by Brooke Susan Parker, who. Who does a fine job? I think I prefer Sally Richardson just because of her, um, you know, work on Eureka and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those characters that it changes that they do have different actor for whatever reason. Pro and probably, well, by this time she probably uh, Sally Richardson was on Eureka, probably. Oh yeah, it could have been. I think this because this, yeah. this would have been about the time that Eureka was because because there was that point there where you had it, you know, Stargate SG One and Eureka were on at the same same day so the golden age yeah yeah the, <laughs> back, i like to call it <laughs> yeah back when yeah. when there was some good stuff on 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 sci-fi channel Definitely not instead of sharknado something to do on friday nights right <laughs> yeah but, uh, and of course we had ryak no. return as well you know we had a uh, yeah you know teal son who's suddenly brainwashed until he's he's totally not honest <laughs> didn't see <laughs> yeah anything. I, I was, I, what I, you know, I wrote down it, you know, Jack is overly concerned. Tilk is underly concerned. He's like, oh, he's, he's a, he's a Jaffa. He could, he's tough. He can overcome this, this brainwashing. And Jack's like, yeah, dude, you, you, you're completely missing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it gives us two of our like favorite early Stargate tropes. The first one of which is the twist ending that even the characters can see company uh, coming. Yeah. So they hang a lantern on it and say, wasn't this too easy? Gosh, there must be a twist yeah. coming. <laughs> and then the other one is a lengthy like detox or deprogramming scene where, you know, the episode should be wrapped up or it should be going into, you know, a fast paced third act. And instead we're, we're stuck in a, a medical room or a cell or something yeah. while they try to, you know, convince. We saw this in Need with Daniel Jackson where, you know, oh, it looks like that's wrapped up. Nope. We still got 15 minutes of, you know, drug detox to go. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a, a as Tilk's talking to him, and I hate you, and I hate my mom, mom, and I hate everybody, and I just want to go back and be with my God, and da 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 da, and, and it's just like, yeah, it's just zap him with the the yeah. Zach, Zach gun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, extra shock therapy doesn't isn't wouldn't that be dangerous? Yeah, to be to be perfectly honest, we wouldn't know what it would do to a symbiote. How about shooting him with a Zat? Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I called it Zatro shock instead of Electro shock. Yeah, that was clever, you know, yeah. and it's just and it's like you know, talk about. Oh yes, this is a, a real medical procedure or whatever. Also, we can just go and shoot him with an electronic gun. Yeah. Okay. Right. That was awfully easy, right? Real. Yeah. <laughs> real deprogramming, or I could just shoot him with something we've all been shot with, and we all survived, and it hurt for a few minutes, but we're good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got kids. I think I'd, I think I'd shoot them with the Zat gun. I, I was going to yeah. say, I wonder how many parents are, are like, hey, I want one of those. Yeah. If it, you know, because it, it quiets them down for at least five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> at least. Right. 
So uh, radiation will help me cure my cancer. Yeah, go stand in Chernobyl for a little while. Yeah, exactly. Same same thing. Yeah. But um, but yeah, and we get to see uh, you know, uh, Jack right Zat Zat uh, Frotac a couple times and mm -hmm. three times right. Yeah, One, we, two, three strikes, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we got Frotac. We meet for the first time, and supposedly he's like the bestest buddy of Tilk, like ever. And really was jealous of Tilk about his his wife and, you know, wanted to be with him. And, you know, oh, yes, you can trust me. And he was offended that Tilk didn't trust him. The next scene, he's betraying him, trying to betray him to the to the, the Gwauld. And it's just like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. And so this is my controversial, uh, like, theory here. So I'm watching this. And I wrote, I even have a note, Tilk is very, acting very stupidly throughout this episode. Like... You know, his, his wife, he's in this house, Frotac is there taking care of him, and he gets, you know, really mad at Frotac, and, you know, he wants to swear cuckold's revenge on him or something, yeah. which, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then, like, you know, he's, he's making out with his ex-wife, um, and Frotac sees him, and that's what convinces Frotac very quickly to mm -hmm. suddenly yeah. betray him. And so I'm thinking, gosh, Teal, like, how stupid are you? And then I'm thinking, like, this is actually, like, very smart. Like, because he already knows his best friend Jack is there and that Jack would kill for him, right? Mm -hmm. And so if Frotec were to catch him, you know, Mackinon, his ex-wife, then he knows Frotec would sneak out to Apophis, Jack would follow Frotec, Jack would kill Frotec, and then suddenly no more Frotec. So, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that's... I, I think you're giving I think you're giving Tilk too much credit for this. I, I, I Maybe. Don't, there wasn't a lot of thought process in, on <laughs> Tilk's part in this episode at all. No. Or is that what he wants you to think? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it is funny though. Where you know, there's several times O'Neill is like, "Okay, dude, you're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. You know, this is yes, this is your son, but this is all too easy." Carter's like, "This is all too easy," and then Tilk's like, "Oh no, no, this is not a problem at all." And we see another one of Tilk's best friends being being killed, right? Yep. Um, she uh, Shekel was the, was the other one, and now uh, Protec. A lot. Yeah. Um, He's a and, and this, yeah, he does. Yeah. And in this one, we see, we see Jack do the, the triple triple tap on the yep. Zack gun. One, and One of the only times, right? Yep. Yeah, very few. Yeah, very, very, very rare that we see that. Usually, usually it's yeah. almost the double tap against uh, the serpent guards or something like that. But rarely do we actually see them getting wiped out like that, where they actually just fade away. Not even like a pile of dust. They're just gone. <laughs> but And uh, uncredited, um, and so he must have been wearing one of the masks because I didn't see him, Mike uh, Dopud, who um, is, this is his first of nine characters across the Stargate uh, <laughs> franchise. Wow. One of the yeah, regulars. He plays one of the, yeah, not, well, they're not the Orion Syndicate, but whatever they're called um, on Universe. He plays one of them. Uh, is a couple of different characters in Atlantis, and I think plays six different characters across hmm. uh, SG One. So, yeah, he's been in everything, um, but uncredited. So probably in in the uh, in one of the masks or something. He, but it was good to see uh, good to see him show up for the first time. I wonder if he's the one that Jack killed to get his mask as he escaped. <laughs> Could be, yeah, yeah. There's a great great scene where he comes to the door, and of course, Bray Tax ready to kill him. He's like, wait, wait, wait! Drops the yeah. drops the hood. No, we're fine. <laughs> and you wonder, is Bertek going to pause? Like, mm, oh, okay. I won't shoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even from the beginning, Bertek insults Jack as he, as he comes out of the gate. You know, Jack's like, it's great to see you. Yeah. And insults him. It's like, oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> we get to see Gould TV again, which yes. mercifully, we don't really see too much of that after yeah. this point, I don't think. Not not very so exciting. Not very exciting no. TV, that's for sure. <laughs> apparently, all the Jaffa have this like uh, spherical orb you know, that's redundant in their house, and Apophis can pop in whenever he wants to with an emergency, you know, cool broadcast and and, uh, and and say his piece. But I think in the previous episode where he was doing this through the gate, wasn't it like a two way communication? Yes. So I was wondering, like, can he see into everybody's homes with this thing? And is it really like the smartest thing to have this just kind of sitting out if you're harboring fugitives and stuff? Maybe this is only like a unidirectional. Uh, this, yeah, this might be just a broadcast uh, thing. This, you know, yeah. you probably need the gate to do the bi directional. That's not a book. I'm thinking Brave New World, <laughs> right? Yeah. Brave New World or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the things, you know, I latch on to, I was like, oh, how does this, like, 
yeah. TV thing work? Is it is it a radio broadcast? Is it something else? Okay, but, but here's know. the question. So they broadcast it. They say, hey, they have my mom, right? Mm-hmm. How come the neighbors didn't come banging down the door? Is she here? What's going on? I mean, well, especially have to know that. I was going to say, especially since, you know, they were offered, you know, a million gold bucks mm-hmm. or 10 million or whatever it was for. Yeah, I think it was like a million for for Teal'c himself and then another million space bucks for the uh, for the rest of them, the heads of the rest of them. But you notice they wanted he wanted Teal'c alive and the rest it was yep. their heads. Yep. So. He, I think I think he's done with SG-1. He's like, nope, cut, cut off their heads. <laughs> you know, I've, I've dealt with them enough. Now, now, mind you, up until that moment, they, SG-1 didn't even know that he was still alive. Right. You know, they thought he had died when his ship blew up, but no, he snuck out before, before they could, so. With Florel, evidently, who we, yep. they, they didn't really yeah. address where he might be, so I guess it just didn't fit into the plot for this one. I mean, we see him later, nope. but at this point, we know they're both alive, but we only know where one is. Exactly. We get a lot of uh, Jaffa language in this one. We learn that a Hataka is worse than a Sholva, apparently. Hmm. So file that away if uh, for your uh, you know next wedding toast or whatever. But I wonder if it, it's if it's like you know Shova is a coward versus the other one's traitor or something like that. Or yeah, yeah, I don't know. And then we get uh, you know the the Jaffa lullaby or whatever at the end that I didn't bother to translate. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I know. <laughs> Did you at least Google Well, it? we know that a... <laughs> okay, now you're making me feel bad. Let me, <laughs> let me look it up. Like a YouTube ah, okay, video, it says right? here, pup, 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 poker face, pup, pup, poker face. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, anyways, we're done with that now. <laughs> well, we, we know that Kelmar Tokim means basically revenge by a cuckold, or revenge by, they said, revenge yeah. by someone who wears horns. <laughs> yes, by the wearer of the horns. <laughs> so apparently the Jaffa are like big into Shakespeare or something. I mean, because uh, I think. Well, you know, you, you never heard Shakespeare unless it's a, it's real Jaffa, original Jaffa. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh boy, and we learned that uh, that they're pretty handy with uh, putting bioweapons into teeth. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that, that's kind of a that's kind of a classic trope of you know the the the. the teeth that were broken out replaced by the you know of course in, in spy movies that's always the that's how they kill themselves you know it's always a poison for themselves yeah and in, th- in this case of course it's a, a bioweapon that the two parts mix and it creates a 24-hour bioweapon then in 24 hours the entire world is going to be wiped out yeah and so like i'm wondering they must have been very careful when they were extracting those teeth right i mean yeah like and then what did they do with them like afterwards to, like did they keep them or i mean apparently i mean they must have destroyed them but how do you destroy like i would assume one at a time have... yeah pro- oh that's a really good yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait a minute did... you know just like knock them together with a rock or something yeah. but they said it was two separate yeah. bioweapons when mixed together was the most deadly thing they've ever seen and i'm thinking well so did you mix them together like how do you know that yeah they, I, I mean I'm not a they, they do a lot of stuff in that la- laboratory you know like where the the um, nanobots that caused Jack to age, you know, they, they brought that and put that in the laboratory and it tried to get out. So, I mean, maybe that's what they did. They took just a couple of, maybe that's what they did with it. They broke it inside the lab- laboratory in the little uh, sealed container there and saw what it did and went, oh, okay, now, now we destroy this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> put those back in the teeth. So, so, some poor airman had to go step in there and got killed yeah. like instantly. Yeah. No, it was, it was Graham. <laughs> Man. Send Graham in there. I can't believe yeah. I missed last week. Did y'all talk about Graham? Tell me you did. Oh, yeah. We, we did. Oh, yeah. And we made fun of him. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't good to have a crush on Carter. I'm just saying. Nope. Nope. Not at this all. It's true. Yeah. Well, this is the second time. We don't know how he survived. Yeah. yeah we don't know how he survived because he's allergic to tetracycline and they like increase the oxygen to make the bacteria like reproduce faster. But I don't know. Yeah. He took some vitamin D, I guess. And. It got better. Oh, yeah. I got better. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> well, this is the second time now the gold have used a child, right? Child yep. blow up <laughs> they, yeah. They even hang a lander like, Cassandra, anyone? Yeah. 
<laughs> but it's like check him out feel you know feel if there's any kind of you know i'm I'm not just noticing like lump that's growing as he gets closer to the stargate no nope, he's good right. <laughs> okay so there was an interesting moment he said carter check him out right and she starts like patting him down like he's looking for a gun but then you realize she's looking for a gould right mm-hmm. but he has a symbiote so but, yeah i guess yeah. the question is Jaffa can Jaffa can't become Gould, right? Can they be? Wait, I think we did learn this in another season. They, they, they do. Know, by yeah, their I hooks, right? I mean, they're they're symbiote. Yeah. But I just thought I can't remember. <laughs> I, I, I think they were. I, mean, I think they were looking for the bomb. I would think they were looking okay. to see if they had done the. They're try, You know, if, if Apophis extra, went back to the same trick. Okay, extra knackered in his body. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was looking for any kind of sign that he he was. But yeah, they they weren't clear. The only other thing I could think of is if like. They were looking to see if he had like an actual thermal detonator or something like that on him, you know, some kind of bomb or something, you know, actual physical device that he could blow up, you know, instead of a, a Nakwita bomb like like they did with Cassandra. Um, but yeah, it's just it, it was so clearly it's like, yeah, something's not right here. This, this kid is not who Tilk thinks he is because right. there's something not right there. But hey, you know, let's take him to Earth and figure it out. Why not? I mean. Doc Frazier's got to be the best doctor around. I mean, she. Oh, might, absolutely. Right? She deals with. Oh, it. sure. Mm-hmm. Well, now she knows what she's looking for. <laughs> yeah. And Treyarch wasn't really on point with the whole noticing the teeth right. thing, right? I mean, yeah. it's. Well, yeah, you, you would have noticed that on the. Actually, now I'll have to go back and watch, but I won't. On the. <laughs> like on the Gould sphere, if he had his front teeth was or it not. His front teeth? I thought it was like a side oh, teeth or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it was his front uh, teeth. Okay. It wasn't until like he smiled really widely that she goes, wait a second. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, yeah, if it was like his two you front think, teeth or right? something. It'd be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when he started cr- seeing, you know, all I want for Christmas is my two front <laughs> teeth. <laughs> all I do is whiffle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who was rooting for Teal to just punch Daniel Jackson? When he says, oh, what point? You, sh- you should thank oh. him about Dreyak mm. marrying Frotek. And he goes, well, well, maybe actually you should thank him. It was like, yeah. What? <laughs> Did you just say I actually, that <laughs> I actually had, I actually wrote down Daniel is the voice of reason. So, yes, yeah. Yes, but and that's, yeah. It's, and that's like the only, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the only significant thing Daniel did this entire episode mm-hmm. was like calm down Tilk. Well, I think like, what else did Daniel do? Kid, so. Yeah. It, yeah. And Braytac didn't do a heck of a lot either. No. Huh. And, I, I mean, Jack, Jack, I liked his, you know, focus on Teal'c's son, you know, given his own, you know, his own son, um, you know, you know, the, protecting Teal'c's son is the most important thing. We're not leaving without him. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, all the above and stuff. So I think that was a nice. Uh, yeah, I think Jack uh, definitely had a, an important part in this especially being kind of the vo- uh, speaking of voice of reason kind of being the one to say you know there, there's something's just not right here you know because mm-hmm. like when uh protac left jack was you know basically sleeping above the door there going and was kind of watching him going okay this guy's sneaking out for a reason you know this isn't good that it's in the middle of the night and this guy's sneaking off you know so, so was it revenge or was it money or was it both i think it was well i think for he, he he betrayed them because he wanted Dreyak for himself. I think this is the old, he, he was, he had the hots for Tilk's wife. And once he got her, he didn't want to let her go. Yeah. And he- Even though Dreyak did not have love for him. Yeah. You have like the whole 1950s, like forbidden planet or, you know, <laughs> where if everybody talks in like weird ways and stuff. And yeah. Like, Do you have love for him? No, I have not love for him. Or whatever. <laughs> ah. they, were, they did. They did try a little bit to differentiate, right? Yeah. Earth culture versus they're trying to establish a Chulak culture. Mm-hmm. Although Protac was a little bit, he was different. I mean, he, he was different from every other Jaffa we'd met so far. He was much more of a PR person, maybe you could say. Mm-hmm. Jaffa, you know, because he comes down and he's, oh, Tilk, it's so wonderful to see you. And he's like the most friendly guy ever. And it's like, this is not Jaffa we've seen before. Yeah. And the Shovah this guy's, in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And Teal'c was first primed to Apophis, but from the burned out wreckage we saw early on last season, like Protex house is a lot bigger and a lot nicer than, mm-hmm. than Teal'c's ever was. 
even if your like little secret passageway has the most obvious hidden door. <laughs> I know, you know right? They show it later on in the episode. It's like this cookie cutter cutout of like a secret. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. The, I love the I love the the Jaffa coming in and and you know get, you know sweeping the house and they literally go upstairs and look and look and go back down and that was it. It's like they didn't even go into any rooms or anything like that. And it's just like, yeah, this really didn't do much of a sweep. Although, you know, every house needs to have a priest hole like that, though, you know, a place where yeah. you can, you know, hide. But at least make it a little hidden a little better so people don't actually see it. Now, uh, Frotek, he said he was like in the Hall of Records or something like that. I don't know. That's why I wonder if he's into bribery. Oh, yeah. Right? The, the Hall of Recording or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, yeah. Another one that was like, why, why the odd constructions? But. But yeah, no, he was pretty chill for Jaffa. I mean, he was he was a pretty cool guy. But I mean, even Frotek has lim- has its limits, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a cool guy until you cross him, I guess. Yeah, that, that's about it. Try, try to take away his now now wife, take her back or something. You know, that that's it. You know, that's you now. Of course, the question is, was he was it a trap from the beginning on his part? Was he planning on betraying him from the start, or was it just because he caught Tilk and his ex wife making out? I'm thinking I think how that. to get the big house. Oh, he marries the Shova's wife, and that everyone knows ha- has been back once, right, to see her. Mm-hmm. He has a son who's coming of age. Maybe he'll be back again. So maybe it's a good thing to keep them close, so then you can turn them in, so you can get an even bigger house. There you go. I don't know. I'm still on Team Protech here. I think he was just a really nice guy. And- <laughs> <laughs> to his limits. He was honest until he his his yeah, yeah his heart was he, broken. He was, yep. Yeah, he was he was until he was, he was uh, oh yeah until he was wearing the the horn uh, the until he was the Kelmar token or token or whatever it was. <laughs> yep. Delmar Hokim as as Jack says. Uh, so is there anything else uh, you guys want to mention on this? We've we've kind of just rambled on through the the episode, but I think we've hit. At least the high points I've got. I don't know. Victor, you got anything else? Um, military term in here. Uh, we go CCT, one shot, C- one kill. I looked up CCT, but there's just too many acronyms C- for that. CTT, I yeah. I, I, oh. I don't know counterterrorism tactics. I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of that would. I like the yeah. one shot, one kill, though. I mean, you know, that, that, that's right out of Sniper, but. Yeah. And uh, at the end, they go off to the Land of Light, like you said, with, with Tuplo. And that, that Tuplo guy, he seems very eager to, like, just have anybody new in his kingdom. I mean, maybe he's a nice guy, but it just seems like he's, like, just way too, way too eager. I don't Did know. they send yeah. him with uh, to take him antihistamines, right. just in case? Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, the, uh, the symbiote would protect uh, Ryak. Yep. But, so... Yeah, we, did, we, I was like, I was watching this. I was like, is this the one where Ryak flies the Death Glider? But that's not for another few years. So yeah, I, I, I think if I remember right, reading right in the the wiki, we don't actually see him for like four more seasons. Yeah, yeah. I think it was season yeah. five well, or six. Yeah, yeah, and, and then always, I don't think Dryak comes back ever again. Right. I think they just show flashbacks or something for her. Mm-hmm. Yep. They put her on a bus, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa, anything your part? No. Yeah. <laughs> I you know what what I missed last week I was like oh it's family I'm good I can miss this one <laughs> <laughs> and then it was it was message in a bottle I was like oh darn it <laughs> well, so it was, it was kind of funny uh, uh today we for Secrets of Doctor Who we recorded the episode Journey to the Center of the TARDIS and there's a scene in there where uh what are basically like uh rods fuel rods from the tardis one of the tardis's fuel sources is shooting through the walls you know it it looks like the the uh galaxy quest scene where there's the crushing pistons you know kind of like that where they're trying to avoid them as they're running down the hall and one of them gets one of the 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 guys that just happened to get into the tardis because they you know like hijacked it from space um gets speared through the arm with it mm-hmm. and it's like and of course my immediate thought was you know message in a bottle and yeah. how yeah they they Sergeant Siler's trying to cut it, and it moves. It's like, well, at least it was more successful in Doctor Who because they actually got it cut and got him off of it instead of, you know, it pushes through for make things worse. So, <laughs> but next week we have an, another awesome episode. 
Yes, oh, yeah? we do. Yeah, Jacob. Jacob oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yes, that's a that's a good that's a good one. So we we'll look got, got that to look forward to. But before we get to next week's, we actually have some feedback. We got some feedback hey. to share. We got an email from Lynn who said, "I just found your podcast this weekend for this episode, and the episode is Korai. Thank you for discussing the Christian perspective regarding the needs of the many versus the needs of the few or the one. Your clarification, your conversation clarified for me what God would want from us in that situation compared to the secular world." Keep up the great podcasts. I'm really enjoying them. Well, thank you, Lynn. Uh, you know, we really yes, appreciate that. You. you know, that's of course that's what we're here for. You know, not just to to talk about the uh, the fun stuff of Stargate, but also to talk about you know, when there's an intersection of the spiritual, of the the moral that we can bring in. We definitely want to do that. So we, we appreciate your feedback, and please keep listening, and please keep sending us emails. We want to hear from all our listeners. Um, yeah, so that was that, that's great that to hear. Very nice feedback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the intersection of faith and Stargate doesn't happen all that often, but but uh, when it does, <laughs> yeah, we'll, maybe we have to jump ahead about. We'll be there. Seven seasons. Yeah, we'll, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so as as we finish up, we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create secrets of Stargate, including Richard C, Andrew C, Santa S, Kathy S, and Mark M. Their generous donations at sqpn.com/give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and all the great places you can find podcasts, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. To find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate. You can email us at stargate at sqpn.com or follow starquest on social media at facebook.com slash star starquest media or on twitter at sqpn we'll be back next time when we'll be discussing the next episode of sg1 secrets until then lisa jones thanks for joining in this sharing the secrets of stargate thanks father Corey. and victor lambs thank you as well thanks father Corey. and remember my place of work is in the hall of recording yeah <laughs> <laughs> Real exciting place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got microphones. We got amplifiers. It's a Ooh. great place. And once again, I'm Father Corey Stika. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs>